How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to closely monitor this tropical disturbance right here which now has a high 80% chance of developing which could potentially become Tropical Storm Lee or Hurricane Lee in the more long term future as it approaches the Caribbean. So here's a look at Invest 95L as of right now and we do see it's a lot more concerning com um, at least compared to yesterday because we do see a lot more convective activity and the chance has risen within the next 48 hours that we could see tropical cyclone development um, more of a moderate chance rather than a low chance um, as of um, the latest um, advisory from the National Hurricane Center and we do see just a lot of convection it's still somewhat lot sided though so it's so if this were to intensify into a tropical storm it likely won't intensify very quickly because like i said yesterday the storm system is still somewhat lopsided the um, center of circulation is towards the eastern half of this convective activity it's still relatively dry and that's expected to continue over the next several days because of the amount of dry air that's going to be just to the northwest of this storm system however once this approaches the caribbean it could encounter a small small area where there won't be as much dry air and we could potentially see this storm become a little bit more symmetrical where we see moisture and convective activity on all sides of this storm system which of course could lead to rapid intensification which is some of what the computer models are suggesting is going to happen once this approaches the Caribbean. Here's the latest look at what the GFS model is stating and in some ways it's better compared to yesterday's run um, when it comes to Caribbean impacts. However, in other ways it's um, it could bring um, worse or it could potentially um, bring um, impacts that are even worse compared to yesterday's run and the reason why I say this is because for one thing is that the good news is, is that at least for this latest run, it does bring it um, further northward than um, than um, compared to yesterday. So um, in this scenario, the Caribbean islands don't receive um, direct impacts. However, that could easily keep in mind that could easily change over the next several days. Um, we're still seven days out from this. I'm reaching the longitude of the Puerto Rico area, so a lot could change between now and Sunday, September 10th. Um, but the reason why I say it's um, this could potentially be a worse case scenario compared to yesterday is because the storm's a lot stronger um, compared to last um, to compared to yesterday's run, where we see the millibar pressure now drop down to 985 millibars, which is easily. A hurricane if you compare that to yesterday's run the storm system was mainly hovering around a thousand millibars mainly a weak to mid-level chocolate storm when it directly impacted the caribbean islands but in this scenario the storm is a lot stronger but the good news is that it's a little bit further northward as it's able to avoid the stronger as the gfs model is expecting less wind shear than usual however this still comes uncomfortably close to the lesser antilles as a 996 millibar storm system which would enhance the rainfall right around the lesser antilles as well as puerto rico so you definitely still need to be aware of this even if it doesn't necessarily directly impact the lesser antilles is still could bring heavy rainfall and then beyond this point um we're gonna wait and see once this um entire run loads up because as i'm speaking right now the um initialization is loading up this is the furthest i could go so we're gonna need to see if this will have a chance to move further westward but if we were to take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly um we do see that there is a trough that's going to dig down and there is a small opening where this could escape. So hopefully this trough ends up being um, stronger than anticipated for this to avoid the United States. But we're going to need to wait and see um, depending on how strong this ridge is or how strong this trough is. Because that will play a big role in terms of steering flow once this approaches the United States. However, I will say at this point that... The, um, the Caribbean islands, especially the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico, you likely will at least experience some impacts from this tropical cyclone, whether it's just rainfall, maybe it could be a little bit more than that, such as gusty winds and rough surf. Or you could potentially um, receive direct impacts um, at either at Tropical Storm 
force um um status or potentially hurricane status which would definitely be the worst case scenario really the track all depends on the amount of ridging just the north of this storm like i detailed yesterday the gfs model is expecting a little bit more of a weakness in ridging um compared to yesterday which is the reason why it expects this storm to move just north of the caribbean islands but still a lot of days to iron out the forecast now let's move on to what the european model is stating as of the latest zero z run um the european model at least when it comes to its trajectory is showing a very similar forecast to the gfs model which makes me believe that we could potentially see a higher likely scenario that it could move just north of lesser antilles in puerto rico and not bring direct impacts which would certainly be the best case scenario um but still um keep in mind this forecast is bound to shift over the next several days um but we do see in the gf i mean in the european model scenario the pressure the storm pressure um drops down even more um compared to last run where we see the millibar pressure now down to the 950s which is easily a category three potentially a category four hurricane just to north of the caribbean island so even if this doesn't directly impact of the islands this would still bring a high amount of rough surf and i wouldn't be surprised if in the more vulnerable areas you experience some minor coastal flooding because look at the millibar pressure 941 millibars this is easily um a category four hurricane and would bring um just very dangerous wave heights um all throughout the caribbean islands and moving forward with the forecast we see that it sort of sa stagnates um just north of puerto rico but eventually does take a slight shift further northward so i'll say the most likely scenario in the european most um case as of right now would be that it avoids the united states um because if we were also to take a look at the final gym millibar height anomaly there is a big trough and there's not really going to be a strong enough ridge uh um steer this out um um west to the united states we're going to see if this keeps up um but without the gfs and the european model agreeing that there's going to be a just enough of a weakness in ridging for this to move northward just before it reaches the united states um then at, at least for right now that would be the most likely scenario but be aware of any shifts with the forecast because there's still a lot of time to iron its forecast out now when it comes to strength forecast let's move a little bit further back um towards um where we are right now and we do see that initially like i said this storm's gonna be very lopsided which means that it won't strengthen very much it's gonna hover around tropical storm status there is plenty of dry air just the northwest of it and much of the moisture will be mainly located on the western half but eventually the storm will become more symmetrical just um when it's at the point where it's just to the east of the lesser antilles and that's when we should see rapid intensification most likely the european model is a lot more aggressive in rapidly intensifying than the gfs model but both are now green that we should at least see hurricane lee which i believe is the most likely scenario at this point so here are what the GFS ensemble members are forecasting at this time and majority of them do want to um, form a hurricane just before it reaches the Lesser Antilles and we have quite a few of them taking this um, taking direct impacts over the um, Caribbean islands such as the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic all receive direct impacts from some of these ensemble members as a hurricane so you definitely need to be aware and stay tuned for more updates um over the next several days and however beyond the caribbean we do see the good news is that we do have a majority of them wanting to take this out to sea potentially bringing impacts uh on bermuda um but we'll still um be aware that this could change over the next several days now here's a look at the european ensemble members and we do see that majority of them do want to take it just to the north of the caribbean islands which is certainly good news it is a much more powerful storm in this scenario um but another piece of good news is that just like the gfs model and wants to steer this away from the united states could potentially bring impacts to bermuda in this scenario um so definitely um at least keep tabs on this storm over the next several days um but still um just be aware of this throughout the caribbean as well 
So in terms of my overall forecast, so on the on the Lesser Antilles are now under the cone of uncertainty regarding the chance that this will move over you guys. So you definitely need to at least prepare for potentially tropical storm force impacts as I'll, I'll say that it's becoming at least more likely at this time where at the very least you should expect rough surf um, as this tropical disturbance continues ahead further westward but um yeah just stay tuned for more updates over the islands over the next several days but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching